Hello. Hi, it's Howard here from Camden Town Radio. Hi, Howard. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's great to speak to you, and thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Great. Now, we must ask you, first off, how have you been finding the lockdown situation? Wow, it's crazy, huh? Yes. Um, I mean, it's just really a different way of life, isn't it? Just having to slow everything down and yeah. not um, not kind of going out and socialising in the way that we were all so used to doing. That's right. um, we've, you know, it's completely, I mean, I, I've grown a flower for the first time in my life. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, I think it's been quite popular like, gardening. I know I've been in my garden more than I usually would at this time, so I think it's it's got people out in the garden a bit more. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've definitely not ever, it's not something that I've ever really had time to, like, focus on and concentrate on, and then uh. suddenly, you know, there's no touring, there's nothing <laughs> going on in that, that respect. So I was like, hmm, I might try and grow something. So, But uh, my neighbour did come round and said that I was watering weeds the other day, so oh. I wasn't quite, quite sure. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, yes. going amazingly, but yeah. Have you been planting yeah. anything in particular? Or? Well, I tried like vegetables, oh. you know, like carrots and things yeah. like that, but I didn't put the label where they're supposed to go. Oh, okay. Like I didn't think to label them. So now I don't know what I'm growing, which is why I'm watering weeds at the same time as vegetables. <laughs> but my daughter had been like watering plastic plants for the last three oh. or four months. So I was like, I really need to sort this out. But yeah. All right, great. Well, we'll maybe start with how you started out your career really so you were born in Wibbenhoe, Essex and you grew up near Colchester. I did yeah yeah I lived in Essex for the first 16 years of my life and then I moved up to London um I went to Brit school oh yeah so right. yeah so I moved to kind of south south London um Croydon and lived there while I was at Brit school in a funny little um bed set uh, so i believe you're from quite an artistic background is that correct i am yeah um my yeah i mean i was most of my family are kind of doing uh, like well my my mum is an artist my dad an actor oh. and so yeah they they were both kind of doing their own things yes. <laughs> before me <laughs> so that sort of got um, you in the art mode would you say or? well i don't they my dad always said to me just whatever you do just like get yourself a trade and get a regular yeah. income <laughs> and I just I wish that I had listened to him you know <laughs> well, you got yourself a trade with music <laughs> yeah well I don't know 20 years on I'm like god oh, he was actually really <laughs> talking some truth there but um but yeah he um they they were both like working artists and, yeah. and they very much all they wanted for me was I guess just happiness yeah. and you know to find something that I enjoyed doing I, I guess maybe it was slightly inevitable because you know when you're surrounded by like art and creativity it does it, it's um I guess it just kind of is in your blood isn't yes. it but I do yeah I think you know having living in a house there were there were always like records around and and instruments around yeah. and stuff so yeah. I think that definitely gave me a good good um grounding to becoming a musician yes there must have been quite a lot going on in colchester to have got you to the point where you were able to attend the brit school you must have been what quite active with gigs and things like that early on well i mean i i did write a lot of like i was a massive songwriting oh, right. like geek and right. i basically spent my entire like teenage years just like hold up writing oh, music right. and and I um, I got into Brit school. I didn't pass any of the, like, music theory exams to get into Brit school, but I basically bought, like, eight lyric books, which okay. were completely filled with lyrics, and was like, I, I have to go here because I couldn't get onto my local music course because right. I didn't have the relevant music grades because oh. I hadn't ever studied music in a, like, conventional way. Okay. So I was unable to study locally, and... Brit School was like the only free performing arts school in the country and yeah. so it was really the only option that I had in terms of um, studying music and so I just I kind of showed them all of the the lyric books that I had you know accumulated and I mean I was gigging a little bit but I wasn't yeah. I wasn't really in a band in Colchester <clears throat> I did a few like local gigs and stuff but yeah. 
the main thing that I was kind of obsessed with was lyrics and right. writing and words and stuff. And when I went to Brit school, it wasn't to become like a artist myself. It was more to write for other people. Okay, right. Um, How many songs did you have written by that sort of time? Was it a, quite a large amount? I, got, I, I had about 800 when I got to Brit school. Oh, right. So, <laughs> very large um, amount, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I just, it was, it became a bit of an addiction, like I would just yeah. write every day, you know, after school, I'd just right. come home, and and um, I was just really into like language and words and stuff. And yeah, so you had a great portfolio you could present to them at the Brit School? Yeah, well, I mean, I, now I, it wasn't really releasable <laughs> <laughs> material, but it was, you know, I, I was just learning, and I was just eager to learn, and yeah. And the Brit School kind of facilitated that, and they were brilliant and just kind of helped me find my way, I guess. Um, yeah. And the Brit School so, will, will explain to listeners that the likes of, as well as yourself, uh, Adele, Katie B, Jesse J, Katie Mellower, Kate Nash, it has a, a very long list of aluminaries. Yeah, it, it's a great place to study. You know, it's, it's so many people from different, completely different walks of life all coming together because they have like a love for you know music or um art or theater or whatever everyone yes. is studying their own thing and so it's a really special place to be um very lucky i felt to to have been able to go there because like i said it was kind of the only place that i could have studied yes. for free and um, what was it actually like yeah. at the school because we had somebody on recently who had been to sylvia young school and they told us all about that but We've not yet had somebody on who's been to the Brit School, so we're quite interested just sort of day to day what it was like there, really. Uh, it was just very, like, vibrant and full of young people who really were, like, excited to be there and um, had a passion for something, which I think is, you know, it's kind of makes for a special place. Yes. Um, there was no, I don't know, every, just everyone who had kind of different talents as well, so it was, it was good and a lot of the time was just spent really not in a conventional like lesson situation right. you know we were often just like sent off to collaborate with each other and I think that's kind of a great way to learn isn't it collaborating yes, yes that's right yes and did you meet some very good contacts there that sort of helped you get started in the industry um I mean I I, so when I was at Brit School, I, my manager at the time, um, I, I found him through Brit School. Okay. Um, he, so, so, yeah, I mean, it helped in that way. But I think it also just gave a good, like, grounding and it, sort of the, the whole, it wasn't like a starry place like yes. I think it's sometimes made out to be. It was much more about just really learning your craft. And yes. getting good at it, you know. And, and it's based <laughs> um, in, in Croydon, is that right? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yes. So in, in Southurst, so okay. just on the outside of Croydon. And you were saying earlier you, you, you moved. Yeah, you were saying earlier you moved down there from home. So you went to the first time living away from home. Uh, down yeah, there. I was 16, got a little job in the Saints and Sinners in Croydon, and oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> went from there. Is that a bar, is it? Yeah, All it's right. a pub. I'm not sure if it's there anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> You were talking about a a flat you moved into around there. Yeah, yeah. I had a little, um, well, I lived in a few flats around there. I was a student, so I was kind of in and out of different places. Yeah, we had one place that had no furniture in it. But, um, yeah, they were all kind of close to to school, and we had a lot of fun. uh, So there was plenty of space for musical instruments then if there was no furniture? Yeah, well... (laughs) I say there was no furniture. There was a massive sound system and a lot of guitars. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we had like a blow-up sofa and I slept on a camp bed for <laughs> quite a long time. But yeah, it was fun. But um, then I slowly moved my way up, up actually, um, up to North London and oh, it right. ended up in Kentish Town. And, oh, right. Okay. And you're kind of, your neck of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what year are we in now? Are we in sort of 2008 around that time? Yeah, so first album came out in '09. so I had just left Brit School a few years before that. Oh, so, right. yeah, um, my first album came out when I was living in Streatham. Oh, okay. I, no, I was living in Kentish Town, actually, I think, when it came out. Yes. And then um, just opposite the Forum on Highgate Road. Oh, yes. In yes, a little are. flat in yeah. the attic, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I lived there for a lot of years. I was there for over 10 years, I think. Oh, right. Well, um, sounds a very good location, being close to that venue, but also... Only a short walk from the rest of Camden Town. 
Oh, I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> it's very much like my little home, Kentish Town. It was there. Yeah. All of my friends I made a lot of good friends there, and actually met my husband there. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd walk into Camden, my little yeah. route would be down Kentish Town High Road and oh, yeah. along the lock into Camden and have a little wander around and I haven't been back for a little while actually. I what's it like in lockdown? Is it all is it very quiet or is it kind it of has, carrying on as normal? It was for a long time. I think once the market opened that was a really good point because yeah. it started to bring people back in. What there has been, there's been actually in the Camden market area they've done some open air gigs actually oh cool uh, so, so when you moved there around so 2009 and you, your first album was coming out so were you mm-hmm. kind of a regular in a lot of the Camden venues and things like that or yeah I mean I played the kind of bars and stuff yeah um the one opposite the roundhouse yes opposite the roundhouse the, um, um, opposite the roundhouse the, the monarch uh, bar uh, yeah I've played the monarch a couple of times but oh, it's right. the other one that I was thinking of it has like an upstairs oh I know the one is it the oh. Oxford Camden Assembly now, yes. It used to be known yeah. as Barfly, that was it, yes. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Yes, played Barfly. Barfly. Yeah. <laughs> Barfly many a time. And, yes. uh, yeah, I played the Monarch a few times. Oh, okay. and, oh yes, uh, those... I was going to say, I actually played them um, quite recently. Uh, we we did a warm-up gig in Spiritualize oh, for yes. On Dead Way. It, not, not Spiritualize, Spiritual Bar. Yes, Spiritual um, Bar, yes. Yeah, and that was really fun. We played a warm-up gig and then we did the Roundhouse a couple of weeks later, so it was fun. Mm-hmm. It was a secret gig, so... Yeah, it started to become yeah. very popular, the spiritual bar, yes. Yeah, so oh, people it's so nice. Talking about it, and it's a kind of venue where new and aspiring artists, they can play their own music without feeling pressured to play sort of commercial music, things like that. So It was super chilled uh, and yeah, really tiny a, and fun. secret and yes. lovely. I, I, it was one of my favourite gigs. I did it with my side project, actually, and oh, right. it was just under a, like, sort of a secret thing just to warm up for the gig the following week, and right. it, was, yeah. it was great. Have you played Green Notes as well? Is that one... I have, yeah, a long time ago, I think. Yes, <laughs> I played most of the, the Camden venues because it was, a, I like that I could walk home afterwards. Well, wow, <laughs> yeah, Dublin Castle as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay, yes. back in the day. Now, your surname is, is quite an interesting one. I mean, I, I do like the name because it's, it's quite a distinctive name. So, mm-hmm. and it actually, it, it sounds like it could be a stage name, even though it is your real name, isn't it? Yeah, a few people actually said that it was a fake name in the press a while ago. <laughs> no, it, is, it is your real name, yeah. Do you know yeah. the origin of the name, or...? So um, it's originally from, well, so my dad's uh, family are, are all um, from around the northeast, like around um, Newcastle and oh. Hartlepool. Yeah. Um, but then somebody traced it back to a lot of Scattergoods went over to America. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, the, the truth is I don't exactly know where it's from, but... Yeah. I know that there's a lot more scatter goods in the northeast than there are in the right. southeast. Um, and some in America. But, uh, right? Yeah, um, it, I I was looking up to see what it meant, and apparently it means here today and gone tomorrow. Oh, okay. oh, right. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't that's think interesting. it is. Interesting. But yeah. <laughs> Maybe it means sort of make the most of today. Perhaps. I, uh, that's a good way of putting it. Nice. I like that for sure. Yes. When I was younger, I was like, oh, why don't I just have a, like, easy-to-spell short <laughs> name? But yeah. now I'm like, yeah, you know what, I that's mine. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of the first word I think of is scatter cushion, I think, when I... Oh, that's nice. That's I read very, it, like, so. homey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe that be, might be a merchandise idea you could... Oh, uh, scatter good scatter cushion. Yes. <laughs> I think I need to, need to tidy up my house before that happens, but yeah. <laughs> so your first album we've, we've touched on earlier, which was released in 2009, it was self-titled, Polly's Cut Good, and then in mm-hmm. 2013, your next album, Arrows, was released. Yeah. Uh, you had a, a sort of hiatus of seven years after that, but then this year, 2020, your new album, In This Moment. Yeah, yeah. My new album, In This Moment, yeah, it came out in July, at the start of July. Yeah, sure. And... It's kind of a good time, I think, to be releasing an album during lockdown times. It felt like the right time to come out. It was scheduled earlier in the year, but then we couldn't, because it was just as lockdown happened when it was originally scheduled for, we couldn't work out how to get the the product actually out, you know, because no one was sure on shipping or anything like that. So we moved it to July, and and it it was really, um, it was such a great distraction (laughs) during... um, during what was, I guess, a really super unsettling time, it was great to kind of be able to throw myself into just um, getting it out into the world and 
I wanted to make sure that all of the art and the music and everything was interlinked, yes. you know, so it all had a, told a story and uh-huh, okay. had a purpose. Yes, in fact, we were going to ask you that about the album. So the album cover has yourself with a sphere, which looks like a, yeah. a crystal ball, perhaps, or something like that. But, um, mm-hmm. but yes, we, we were under the impression that there is a theme running throughout the album. So do you want to explain a bit more about the album in this moment and the concept behind it? Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to use like circles and graphics and layers to represent the like worlds. Yeah. Um, the whole album it's it's um all about twelve moments, twelve snapshots in time, ripples, worlds within worlds, and the the um the tracks on the album are all kind of centered around um reflecting on certain moments in time yes. and so for the album cover I wanted to put my head into a bubble or my own world okay. Okay. <laughs> and be holding another like um, sphere yes. or world um, which yeah I, I like that it, it they were reflecting each other and they were also reflecting the room that I was in that I where the, where the um, photograph was taken yes. I and at one point, somebody said, "Oh, why don't we take out that reflection in the in the glass?" And I thought, "No, I want to keep it in because it's <laughs> reflecting out into another world." You oh, know. Right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the idea behind the artwork, just yes. um, representing, trying to like visually represent what the album was about. I I was very inspired. I don't know if you know of an artist called Kent Rogowski. Okay. Um, he he did a project called the future perfect project and he made these really beautiful snow globes and they were like a snapshot of really private intimate moments encapsulated within each snow globe um so it was like every moment was like preserved inside this beautiful sphere and i saw his work and some of it's quite sad you know like there's a woman sitting on a bed and a man with his back to her and you kind of wonder like what what that moment was and and when I saw this work I was like wow this is really I don't know it did it inspired me a little bit if I'm honest yes. and and that's I guess where the where the artistic inspiration came from um just looking at his his project um it, it's called future perfect for anybody who's listening who wants to check it out because it's really uh-huh. beautiful he did it a while ago but he does really great um kind of um yeah. Yes. All right, sounds great. So yes, we, as we thought, there is a sort of theme running throughout the album, and the songs, I guess there's a mixture, we've had a listen, and there's a mixture of sort of more up-tempo songs, and then some sort of slower tempo, so was that kind of purposeful yeah. to sort of do a mixture of, you know, there's points where the album's getting louder and, and faster, and then sort of slow it down with lower tempo numbers, was that sort of a, you know, to create that whole feel of things changing? So, I mean, it was never a um, thought-through thing that um, I wrote the album. I began writing it, um, bits and pieces of it in Camden, actually, oh, in our okay. studio that we had. Yeah. Um, and then I moved to Fuerteventura and continued writing it. And then I moved to the Kent Coast, and that's where I wrote the bulk of it. Right. And so I think the movement um, and the changes in environment kind of... Um, definitely affected different um parts of the album and the yes. pace of it um and when when i'm writing an album i know some people go into a studio and they're like okay i'm writing an album and it's yes. going to sound like this or it's going to have this vibe to it but that's not really how i write i just write the whole time because i um like i love songwriting oh, yeah. and i i kind of i only decided that it would become an album actually when I had almost got a lot of the songs you know um when I was living um in Kent because then I was like oh you know there's there's sort of a a collection of songs here that I think are actually releasable quality as well as your new album you've got quite an active shop with all sorts of merchandise on there yeah it's um it's been really fun actually for this album um it's kind of uh well it's the first album that i've ever put out on my own label yes um so i started future paradise a little while ago and i have really enjoyed just like 
creating stuff for it really and working with people who can kind of come up with beautiful designs for the merchandise and stuff um yeah. rachel bungie did the designs for the t-shirts and it, she did all the um artwork on the album and then we sort of transferred that onto the t-shirts yeah. and um yeah the shop's been really fun um just getting it all up online i did a lot of handwritten books which oh. um which basically had the the lyrics to the album written by hand um and i i had this so um i think it was on arrows i started doing the handwritten books yeah. and um i just keep them really limited edition like 30 or you know always under 50 oh. and um and just put them online and then but the thing is that they take so long to yes. <laughs> to write um but they're such nice like things to have and and keep and stuff so I really enjoy kind of making them but they're not something I can do all the time but yeah. I've done um like a photography and line lyrics and line book that goes alongside the album as well which is on the website which that was really fun to make as well. Your music has been described as electro pop and also ethereal would you agree with those descriptions? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like it just changes. You know, I yeah. write. Um, I write. What I would like to think is that it's interesting. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, I hope that I put out music that make that people can listen to and then they'll listen to again and maybe hear yeah. something different. Um, I know that I get that out of, you know, the things that I enjoy are things that sort of have layers and textures and yes. you can listen to when you're in one moment and then you can put it on a month later when you're in a completely different mood and get something else out of it yeah. and and hear different different things dependent on what your vibe is and I would I would like to think that that's the kind of album that it is you know yes well we've enjoyed listening to it and we found it's a good Thank album for so lockdown much. oh cool yeah, <laughs> I'm it's... happy to hear this yeah we found it I think yeah I mean today you know, some artists are more single orientated, but I've always been a fan of albums. And mm. I, I do like to put on an album and have the whole thing on. Maybe, you know, you're listening to the thing as a whole rather than just one or two tracks. And it has a nice feel of a album of a set of, you know, yeah. thematic songs. And I'm so happy that you said that because I feel the same way when I listen to a, a record. Like, I really enjoy hearing it. Like, it's nice to be able to dip in and out of yeah. different things but I, I like hearing the whole thing as well you know listening well, I have um somebody actually who, who follows me online who's like I kept on posting you know different singles and he was like I'm saving myself for the whole album <laughs> so I can listen to it from start to finish like yeah. I can see that you're posting singles but I'm not going to listen to them <laughs> and I just I have so much respect for that kind of yeah. way of thinking because it does give you a different experience and I know when I listen to things as a whole you hear it with different ears you know um yeah, and I think particularly when the songs are linked, it's nice to listen to it in one go, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so, we yeah. really wanted it to have a feel of being real as well. And, and yeah. obviously the title is In This Moment. And we we did a lot of field recordings of, you know, like fires crackling yes. or breath. And we spent a long time, you know, making them, you know, processing sounds and yeah. recording things that were part of our day-to-day -day life and putting them on the record. I wanted all of the drums and all of the textures and layers to be to feel as if they were alive and so there are moments of imperfection you know and I think on Arrows I spent a long time trying to get everything in time and kind of perfect whereas yeah. for this record I really wanted it to be have that human imperfection and just feel like real and honest yes, and and so we you know the like the, the arpeggiated sounds and stuff were all played in by hand and and just um I wanted it to breathe like a, a, a piece of music. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah, so you yeah. had quite a gap before releasing your latest album in this moment, which is out now. So during that time, I believe you took somewhat of a hiatus, but it was partly due to you were starting a family at that time. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I did quite a lot in between, yes. <laughs> in between albums, but it seems like a little while ago. So Arrows came out. And I was living in Kentish Town, yeah. and I was a little bit, like, um, slightly lost, I suppose, right. just trying to work out what to do after that record, because it was a record that felt like it came with a bit of pressure. Yeah. And it just, yeah, it left me feeling a, a tiny bit, a bit, a bit but, then, 
Yeah, drained is a good word. Yeah, it just trying to work out what to do next, and then yeah. well, there can be pressure on follow up certainly from from your first album. It can be. There's, yeah, there's I never, <laughs> I, I don't, don't think I realised at the time that it was pressure that was making me feel that way. But no. I think now with hindsight that that is what it was. It was just this kind of wanting to wanting to do well, you know, yeah. wanting to make the best thing that I could make, and I guess sort of blurring the lines in a way between like what I love and I guess trying to like have a commercial album as well I some of the albums on our some of the tracks on arrows were a bit more kind of like poppy okay. and trying to be more in that kind of like field yeah. genre I guess yeah. um I don't think it was particularly intentional but I think because I, I slightly went into like delved into that world with the sound of it it was right. just a bit um I don't know yeah I I just needed a bit of time out basically to work out what what I wanted yeah and then I um I actually met um I I knew James Chapman who is Maps and he he became a really good friend we did a collaboration for the Mute Short Circuit Festival in Camden actually oh. And um, he became really good friends, and we recorded an album, uh, which was a side project called On Dead Waves. Okay. And um, so that came out in between album two and album three. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, I, I moved to Fuerteventura and oh, right. had a baby. <laughs> that must have been quite a change, then, moving. <laughs> huh? Must have been quite a change, uh, not only starting a family, but also moving overseas. That must have been quite a big yeah, okay. well, we, I moved over the seas before I had Sienna. We moved ah. um, to a little um, place called Catillo in Fuerteventura, which right. is like in the north part of the island. Oh. And it's, it's really beautiful and barren and just lots of um, desert and open roads and space. And yes. I, I moved from... I was, I was living on Tufnell Park Road, just oh, off yeah. the Holloway Road, and I moved from there to this uh, little place where I would open the window and goats would walk past my window <laughs> instead of a 390. It was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, it was, I have my daughter who's three now, quite a busy few years yeah. in between albums, but um, it's nice to kind of get this new album out into the world because it feels like it's been quite a long time in the making now. Yes. Yes, I think a very good time to release the album because hopefully in a few months' time, Touring will restart, and then you'll be able to get out and and get performance yeah. from gigs again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of think I said years ago I love the idea of doing like virtual. I mean, I've done a couple of the live stream. I've been doing the attic sessions from my attic ah. actually. Oh yeah, I think that's possible. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so I've been doing a few a few gigs, and there's there's some more attic sessions coming out shortly. But oh. yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you a bit about your influences now. Now you've been compared to well, the likes of. Kate Bush, Enya, amongst others. Uh, I believe that you grew up listening to artists such as Len Cohen and Suzanne Vega. So would you mm-hmm. say you have influences from all those musicians? Yeah, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of music. I try and um, like listen to lots of different sounds. I, I mean, I, Len Cohen and people who write you know, really lyrical things yeah. are definitely artists that have inspired me for sure. Yeah. Um, I, but I feel like around, like I enjoy watching films and I enjoy um, like watching series and I, I feel like I often hear like soundtracky things as well, which oh. kind of inspire me and like that kind of wide screen sound I find quite um I don't know, I'm, I'm forever listening, watching things and then shazamming, like, what's this sound? <laughs> and what's this, what's this track? And, um, yeah, I would say that watching um, films has been a big influence as well. Yeah. Now, just coming on to the musicians that you work with, uh, I noticed there seems some very good musicianship on this album. So have you used the same musicians throughout your albums or are the musicians in this moment, are they a different set of musicians that you've brought together for this this album? So for my first album, um, I had a group of guys who were playing in my band who were just 
brilliant and wonderful, yeah. but they are all off living in different parts of the country doing different oh. things. <laughs> um, so for Arrows, I met Glenn Kerrigan. Um, yeah. He became my husband, but oh. when I met him on Arrows, he was a co-writer okay. and a producer, and he writes music basically and, and design, he's a sound designer. Yeah. So he was an inter- integral part of this album, um, and he we worked on Arrows together, and then obviously he produced this whole album. So he oh. was kind of like my the main collaborator that I kind of bounced yeah. every idea off that I had, and he sculpted the album into into what it is. Right. Um, and then I um, I worked so James Chapman and Matt Kelly who played on the album. Yeah. Uh, Matt played drums and James played guitar. Okay. They were, they are on Dead Waves, so they're my side project. Right. Um, me and James wrote the On Dead Waves album together, and James is Matt's. So his that's his his project, oh. and his he just had an album out quite recently, which is super beautiful. And then the co-writers that I worked with on the album. Um, are Jim Sklavanos, who um, he has played in loads of incredible bands. Um, he's currently in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and he is just one of, I would say, one of the best lyricists and, and writers I've ever, I've ever worked with. Like he just, his use of language is insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he, I did a co-writing session with him when we first on one of the first sort of songs that ended up being an album track and yeah. he brought this amazing spirit to the record he just kind of told me to stop thinking too much about what it's going to be and just enjoy right. the moment and just write you know keep writing yeah. and um so yeah he was very much an uh, integral part of of the album and the writing process yeah. and then um yeah glenn co-wrote yeah a lot of a lot of the record as well so yeah well it sounds a good yeah. process because then you get quite an organic album quite a natural sounding yeah album, i feel it? like yeah. working with people who, who you trust and who yeah. have their own ideas i used to kind of shy away from it i think yeah. on my first record especially but now i feel like it's crucial like it's completely key to getting a record that you know sounds <laughs> sounds good and and it's sort of it's good to work with people who challenge you and yeah. say you know think about that line what do you want to say how do you want it to come across and so I, I it's a small team but I trust them you know and I think that's really key for especially for the writing process yeah I have a remix EP that's coming out on Friday oh, right. so that's called remixes part two yeah um and it's got some remixes it's got a remix by chris liebing okay yeah who he's remixed in this moment yeah and also simon fisher turner who produced my first album right. and can love be synth who um have just done this beautiful like warm remix and yeah. Uh, so yeah that's coming out on friday which i'm super excited to to have out remixes are kind of brilliant because it's like they take this baby that you've been working on for all this time and then just like switch up and suddenly it sounds <laughs> completely different yeah. so yeah I'm looking forward to getting that out into the world where can people get that the usual location uh, yeah it will be a, it will be available in all the in all the usual places a digital release so right. it's not going to be physically available but okay. it'll be on iTunes and Spotify and yeah. Apple Music and um, yeah if you follow on on Spotify then you will get a notification and yeah. it will be sent sent to you all right that's great, but you've got plenty of physical format albums, and they're available on your, on we your website. Have, yeah. We've got some signed, lots of signed vinyls right. and CDs, and um, personalised bits and pieces. So yeah, if anybody wants to get any little treasures, there's yeah. a few limited edition bits left. I'm not quite sure how much clear vinyl is left, but um, right. but yeah, there's there's definitely still some on the store for anybody that wants some. Yes, and the website is poly-scattergood.com. My website is polyscattergood.com. Yes. And then if you click on that, there's a link to the store. Okay, Polly. Well, we've been chatting quite a while now, so I guess I'd better let you go and get a cup of tea on and put the kettle on. Ah, uh, well, my name is Polly, so I've got a lot of experience in that. That's very true, yes. <laughs> well, maybe a cold drink would be better because it is quite hot weather. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> well, great. Well, just before you go, Polly, we have a very quick 
10 question quiz where it's called Favourite 10. It's a feature of the show. It only lasts one minute. Here we go. Uh, Favourite yeah. film? Favourite film is called Rust and Bone and it's a really beautiful one with Mariana Cotillard in it. Okay. Favourite book? Leonard Cohen, Book of Longing. Favourite food? <sighs> sushi. Probably. Yeah, sushi. Okay. <laughs> Favourite place to go on holiday? Favourite place? in the world, Fuerteventura, uh, yeah, or Costa Rica, or Gilly Islands, or Bali. Plenty. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got a lot of favourite places. Yeah. Favourite terrain, countryside or town? Oh, I'm a beach girl. Can that be an option? Come on, then, you can have beach, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> favourite pet? My dog, Maggie. Okay. Favourite tree? Apple trees. Right. Favourite type of flower? Love in the mist. Favourite style of music? Soundscapey, experimental, okay. with words. Funny, favourite song? Suzanne, Leonard Cohen. Well, fantastic, well thanks Colin, it was a pretty good time there, and uh, yeah, you answered all ten. Well, thanks Polly for speaking to us today, it's been fascinating to talk to you about your new album, and we wish you all the best with future shows. Thank you so much for having me, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Hi, my name is Polly Scattergood and you are listening to Camden Town Radio. I've just had a new record out, it's called In This Moment and I really look forward to getting out and playing it very soon to all of you. Um, thanks so much to everybody who's been listening to the record and sending me messages and I hope that you are all enjoying listening to the record and keep on rocking.